Son of the Mask is a 2005 superhero comedy film directed by Lawrence Gutterman. The film stars Jamie Kennedy as Tim Avery, an aspiring animator from Fringe City who has just had his first child born with the powers of the mask. It is a standalone sequel to the 1994 film The Mask, an adaptation of Dark Horse Comics which starred Jim Carrey and Cameron Diaz. So how's the movie, in my opinion? Let me put it this way. This is fucking awful, peeps. Downright fucking awful. So you want to know why? Because the sequel is so bad that Jim Carrey was not part of this fucking film. So, anyways, let's just get this shit over with. Alright, before I head to the plot, just want to let you know that um, initially was supposed to be a follow-up to the original with Jim Carrey returning as Stanley Ipkiss. But Jim Carrey decided after making Ace Ventura 2 that playing the same character twice wasn't interesting to him at the time. So the sequel was shelved and the, and the standalone film was developed instead. Oh, what the fuck. Okay, peeps, let's just get into the plot. Eleven years after the events of the first film, Dr. Arthur Newman is given a tour of the Hall of Norse Mythology in Edge City Museum. Dr. Newman mentions that Loki created the mask and unleashed it on Earth. Unleashed it on Earth, sorry about that. And that those who wear the mask would have the powers of Loki. Yeah, but isn't the fucking kind of Marvel Comics of Loki or whatever it is? Oh no, that's this is a different kind of Loki. This ain't the fucking Marvel shit. Okay, when Dr. Newman mentions that Loki was imprisoned by Odin, a man in black becomes very angry and transforms, revealing himself to be Loki. The tourists panic and flee, but Dr. Newman says... I mean, stays to argue with the angry god. Loki takes the mask on display, but realizes it, it's a fake. In anger, he removes Dr. Newman's still-talking still face from his body and puts it on a mask stand, before getting rid of the guards and storming out of the museum in a whirlwind of rage. Wow, this fucking shit. Yeah, this is pure fucking shit, peeps. Meanwhile, the real mask makes its way to a town called Fringe City, and is found in river by in the river by a dog named Otis, who belongs to Tim Avery, an aspiring animator at an animation studio, who is feeling reluctant to become a father. He has a beautiful wife, Tanya, and a best friend, Jorge, or is it George or Jorge or whatever it is? Okay, I apologize for the mispronunciations and the stuttering that you're about to hear. On a tropical island, Loki is relaxing until Odin confronts him and orders his son to find a mask. Loki asks Odin to help him, but Odin tells Loki that this is his mess and he has to clean it up. Later that night, Tim puts on a mask for a Halloween party, transforming into an eccentric, green-faced party animal. Yeah, but this is a complete absurd of that shit if you ask me. When the company party turns out to be a bore, Tim uses his powers to perform a remix of Can't Take My Eyes Off You, making the party a success and giving Tim's bosses the idea to turn Tim's costume persona into a cartoon resulting in his promotion the next day. Okay. Tim returns to his house and, while still wearing a mask, conceives a baby. The baby named Alvi is born with the same powers as the mask. Meanwhile, Odin possessing a store clerk tells Loki about this and tells him that if he finds the child, he will find the mask. Later, Tanya goes on a business trip, leaving Tim with the baby. Tim, who has been promoted at work, desperately tries to work on his cartoon at home, but it is continuously disrupted by Alvi in order to get some peace and quiet. Tim lets Alvi watch Michigan J. Frog, Woody Woodpecker, the Flintstones, and Transformers on the television. Alvi devilishly obtains the idea to mess with his father's head by using his powers. Okay, so this is like the fucked up and the stupid version of Pet Cemetery, uh, where um, uh, where Gage tried to kill his father, but uh, but instead, and, and when it comes to the mask, it's like a, an infant child. Trying to fuck with a, a cartoonist father. Damn. Meanwhile, Otis the dog, who has been fleeing, neglected by Tim because of Alvi, 
dons the mask by accident and becomes a crazed animal version of himself. Oh, somebody stop me! Well, I bet they would stop you all right, man. Who wishes to get rid of the baby, but all his attempts are overturned by Alfie. Eventually, Loki finds the mask-born infant and confronts Tim for the mask back. But, uh, but it's thwarted again and again by Alfie, who uses his powers to protect his father. I eventually, Odin possessing Tim's body becomes fed up with Loki's destructive approach for defying him once again and strips his fucking son of his powers. A seemingly deranged Tim is later fired after failing to impress his boss during a pitch, but is able to recon reconceal a bond with Alvi. Loki still determined to please his father, he manages to complete a summoning ritual and appeal to Odin to restore his powers. Odin agrees, but only for a limited time, stating that his last chance. Loki then kidnaps Alvi to exchange the mask, but decides to keep him despite the exchange causing Tim and Tanya re having returned home to find him, as well as forcing Tim to don the mask again to fight Loki. The subsequent confrontation is relatively evenly matched due to both of them possessing evil p equal powers, prompting Loki to halt the fight. This suggests that mm, they let Alvi decide who he wants to live with, although Loki tries to lure Alvi to him with toys and promises of fun. Oh, this is a fucking difficult decision when you ask me. Tim wins by removing the mask and asks Alvi to come back to him using the human connection he has forged with his son, causing the infant Alvi to choose Tim. Sad, saddened and enraged, Loki tries to kill Tim, but his time has run out and Odin appears in person, where he begins to banish him. Tim, however, feels sorry for Loki and remains Odin, that regardless of their problems. They are still father and son, and that the most important thing in life is a relationship with your family. Touched by Tim's heartfelt speech, Odin reconciles a, with Loki as a son, and Tim gives a mask to Odin. He returns Asgard to Loki. <laughs> Asgard? <laughs> in the end, Tim's subsequent cartoon based on his own experience of Experiences of Alvi and Otis competing for his attention becomes a success and Tanya reveals that she is pregnant again. Okay, what do I think of that um, after this plot? Well, anyways, the development is, is a complete disaster. The casts are, are just... It's just not the complete one without Jim Carrey. The winner of the failed contest was given $5,000 and other prizes and was issued an apology in the final issue of Nintendo Power back in 2012. In 2009, it was reported that Lance Kaze was asked by Warner Brothers and New Line to do a script for the sequel to The Mask. Yeah, it must have begun back in 2001, is it? Or, I don't know. Oh, The Mask 2? I don't know what the fuck it is. So yeah, um, not long after the release of The Mask, it was announced in Nintendo Power that Jim Carrey would be returning in the sequel called The Mask 2. Uh, the Mask 2 is called The Son of the Mask and Jim Carrey wasn't in there. Ah, oh, shit. So yeah, it appears that Rotten Tomatoes have a 6% rating based on 105 reviews and an average rating of 3.5 out of 10. Overly frantic, painfully unfunny, and sorely missing the presence of Jim Carrey. Well, that's fucking right. Because this movie is a complete pile of horse shit. So Warner Brothers Pictures and New Line Cinema ought to be ashamed of themselves for making the sequel into a complete disaster. So in conclusion, if you guys are still interested to watch this fucking movie, well, be my guest because I ain't got no rights to force you to fucking hate this movie if you guys like it. But if you ever watched uh, watch this movie for the first time and really regret it, well, okay, I don't blame you. So if you wanted to see, um, see a better movie like this, just go stick with the 1994 The Mask film. Trust me, it's a lot better. Thank you.